going on guys and welcome back to the vlogs. I really haven't picked up the camera that much recently. Hopefully you guys don't mind. I know a bunch of you guys have been asking what's been going on with the E36 M3 and unfortunately I lost a ton of footage. I had planned this full big reveal video and I lost it. Now thankfully Quinn, who you guys have seen in previous videos, he recorded and edited some stuff of when we did all the mods on this car. So let me go ahead and insert those clips here. I'll put his channel in the description if you guys want to see the full video. So this is just a snippet of what we did when we did the M50 intake manifold install and a bunch of other stuff. All right, so we're M50 manifold swapping the throttle E36 yeah, today. Buddy, finally, finally. He told me to do this for like two years. <laughs> the first time I ever met him was at an overdue meet, and he drove by and he was like, "Hey, nice car." I was like, "Hey, M50 manifold swap, the throttle body gasket." Oh, he sent you just that? Yep. Dude, that's mint. Yep. That's perfect. It's like 12 bucks. That's not too bad. We're gonna have to use it over again, but okay. So this is the Max PSI kit. I don't know where any of this goes. These are new OEM gaskets for here. Here's the new fitting thing. I believe that goes like in there. It does, yep. Okay, and then I guess they, oh, they give you a good a new one of these because yep. mine's already crimped. And I think that's it. That should be it. Should be right? chilling. Wait, is this a swap? This is a manifold conversion, yep. Yeah. So it's still a kit. No, I had pieces it together. Ah. They have a couple of kits, but because he's boosted, he has to bypass the crankcase vent. Alright, so we got the manifold converted, the car is running, now we just need to get a tune, and then we'll see how much power it makes after that. It was a long day, now it's time for a good cruise home. So before our meeting with Jordan from RK Tunes, I'm gonna do a quick boost leak test. So I got this set up from Torque Solution. You essentially hook up an air hose here with a regulator. You simulate essentially boost going into the motor and you see if there's any leaks. Any leaks could be either a vacuum leak or a loss of power or whatever, and uh, that could throw off our air fuel ratio. So we're gonna go ahead and hook that up with this hose here, and uh, I'll show you guys what it looks like or what it sounds like if we do have a boost leak. So, I'm using the air to provide pressure to the system and then listening for any leaks. I definitely have a leak from one of these injectors. And I have a leak from my weld here. You can't even really see the hole. Okay, so I got a leak right there. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to set the camera down, guys, and try to address as many leaks as I can. So after a little while, now when I squeeze the trigger, I don't hear any leaks. So. There's a little leak from my weld actually. Now I am gonna be redoing all this piping pretty soon. We're gonna be getting rid of this coupler here. So this is gonna be one piece. Um, so I'm not too concerned and as long as it's not leaking, I'm okay with it. I also fixed the leak with the injector. So I think that was actually one of my biggest problems. I uh, ended up tightening up this bracket, taking this off tightening up this bracket and really pushing and seating the injectors down. I think they got a much better seal into the intake manifold. Crossing my fingers that that was the culprit or potentially even this one right by the mass airflow sensor. Um, obviously don't hose me in the comments. So I have a Mishimoto one that's gonna be coming in to replace the uh, OEM coolant reservoir. But cross your fingers, everything is good. Let's see if I can get this thing back on the road. All right, so right now, current setup is I basically have the plug connected to the OBD2 port into my laptop. Jordan is hooked up with a program called TeamViewer. Essentially allows him to remote desktop into my PC. 
change some values around if we need to review it while it's running review all the sensors let's just take a second to appreciate this steering wheel though Woo, who would have thought the squad is on a Sparco steering wheel very cool for those of you who did scoop one up thank you so much for supporting us I love this thing the matrix Ooh. So guys, I'm pretty sure I figured out the problem. This will be the first startup. Essentially what happened is there was a cut in the fuel pressure regulator vacuum line. So the issue that I've been experiencing is running lean under boost. Now if there's a cut in the line from the fuel pressure regulator, the vacuum is basically not changing. And essentially when I get into boost, it's not pushing more fuel into the fuel rail to supply the injectors and therefore running lean. I think this is the issue. Cross your fingers, here we go. All right, so before we get started on today's video, I wanna say a huge shout out to Irwin's Carbon. Check them out on Instagram, guys. They make bespoke stuff for E36, I believe E46 as well. So this is a full, real carbon fiber uh, center console. This is for the glove box panel. Uh, these are for the door handle. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop on as much as I can real quick. And uh, I'll take you guys along for the ride and then we'll get some in-car footage. All right, so I'm gonna start with this uh, little glove box piece here. I'm pretty sure it just pops, hey, pops off like that. Um, this is an OEM piece, which is cool. So I believe that just, oop, I guess they're directional. Just pop that on like so, boom. And as you guys can see, I am missing the glove box button. Here's the glove box button here in the spring. Uh, unfortunately, this little piece broke off. So I've ordered a new OEM piece that's coming in in the next couple days, but already simple upgrade. So now let's go ahead and move on to the door panels. Now I believe to do this, you do have to take off the door panel. If you guys have owned an E36, you know they can be kind of a pain in the butt. I do have some spare clips as well. So I'm gonna pop these panels off. I'll set the camera down and uh, we'll take you guys along for the ride. All right, now that I've gotten the door panels out, it's pretty easy to see. And if you've never owned an E36, I think this is probably one of the worst parts about these cars. But the interior plastics are kind of starting to fall apart. So if you look at this one, this yellow stuff is actually all the factory glue. Um, on this side, it did fall off. It's fallen off once before. Um, you can actually feel it you know, from the inside. And I have epoxied it. Now, because the clips held on, they ripped away from here. So what I'm gonna do right now is clean up this stuff, re-epoxy this plastic piece onto here. And as you notice, a lot of the clips, um, some of the aftermarket clips that I had used before actually broke off. Whereas you can see the OEM clips right here um, are a little bit harder material. I went ahead and placed an order for a whole bunch of clips to replace all of the OEM clips. And while we wait on the distributor for grabbing those, uh, I'm gonna go ahead with a Phillips head and unscrew the handles. Now, on this side, as you can see, uh, that's gonna be the piece that's gonna be replaced with a nice carbon fiber uh, skinned unit. So I'm very excited. I think those are gonna look really good. So we will grab, looks like a Torx bit on this side and a Phillips head on this side. Don't know why that's the way that it is, but it is. So let's go ahead and do that. I will set the camera down and we'll swap these out real quick. Um, I went ahead and grabbed some acetone. I got some Loctite epoxy. I just picked up all of the OEM clips. Um, so that's gonna basically replace all of these spots that are empty here. And uh, cleaned everything off as best I could. So I'm gonna go ahead, make sure these are in the right location, apply the epoxy all the way around. I'm gonna be very generous with it. I really don't want this to fall off again, um, as well as some of these other sections here. I gotta clean that one up. Um, so let me go ahead and I'll set the camera down, put you guys on a time lapse. The other side here actually is in pretty good shape. There's only uh, one spot here that looks like it's lifted and uh, everything else is looking pretty good. I think this glue might be, uh, 
I'm not exactly sure what type of glue this is. We'll hope that this Loctite works. Um, this is a five minute epoxy. It is translucent yellow, so maybe it is a very similar material to this, um, but this should work pretty good. All right, so after about 15 to 20 minutes, this is uh, starting to firm up here. Um, feels good. So I'm gonna go ahead and install these little clips in here. If I remember, they kind of just spin and push in. And there's a little bit of play, but that's how they're supposed to be. Okay. Go ahead and install those all the way around. All right, so moving on, we're gonna go ahead and tackle the center console here. Did a little bit of a uh, light video watching online and it doesn't look too difficult. Pretty much just need to pop off the shift boot, like so. Leave that up, pull out the foam. Just leave that like so. Pop up the hazard light button and there's a screw down here go ahead and disconnect this with the clips up here there's gonna be a couple screws yep I can feel them all right so it turns out to be a little bit bigger job than I thought essentially you have to remove this whole rear section and there's a couple more screws down there and over there. Once you remove that, once you remove these two screws down here, I should be able to lift up this unit. All right, we're about halfway through and it looks like a bomb went off in my interior. I got stuff everywhere. But by the magic of editing, I can make this all disappear very quickly. All you gotta do is one, two, three. All right. Everything has been reinstalled. Also reinstalled the door panels. Um, so pretty much we've got everything all set up from Irwin's Carbon. So once again, huge thank you to you for providing this for the build. It looks really, really nice. The finish is awesome. So that being said, I think it's time for the video you guys have all been waiting for. Let me go ahead and rig up all my camera stuff and uh, let's, let's find a nice quiet road to do some poles down in Mexico. Kind of the first time with this setup i got a camera up here i got a gopro i'm going to try to sync all these footages together i also have some audio right here so bear with me guys i hope this comes out good this is uh e36 m3 turbo s52 low compression head gasket arp head studs gt35r cx racing turbo kit so i know that was a mouthful uh but basically bolt-on turbo kit nothing too crazy makes a lot of noises it has an exhaust cutout over 5 psi uh, from loud valves and uh, let's wait till we get to a nice road here and let's give it some juice and see how it does Go 
down this street here. Go for one more little section.